Hey everyone, it's Jonathan, and welcome back to every version ever of The Grinch. Last time we talked about the original classic from 1966, and this time we're talking about the two little-known sequels to the original, Halloween is Grinch Night from 1977, and The Grinch Grinches the Cat in the Hat from 1981. Joining me once more are Nikki, Carmen, and Mark, and we'll just pick up where we left off last time and jump right into Halloween is Grinch Night. Well, moving on to the sequels. One down, two to go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Halloween is Grinch Night. I don't remember for sure, but I, I think I this was the first of the three specials that I saw in my life. So I think this was probably my introduction to Grinch in animated form. I'm not 100% sure. How did that happen? I think I was on YouTube one day and I'm looking through like just Google. there was like the random Dr. Seuss specials that were available because at the time how did uh, no one had uploaded uh, how the Grinch stole Christmas I think that one had like a big copyright so that would always get taken down if anyone uploaded it. but these somehow got through so I just kind of watched all that was available and this was one of them. I'm so sorry. I, I don't dislike it. It's 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 interesting. It is that that's a good way to state it. <laughs> So like like what Carmen was mentioning earlier about the voice, I, I did I didn't really have a problem with Hans Conry voicing the Grinch. I I kind of think I, it kind of works for me. I kind of I could see Hans Conry voicing the Grinch and like the voice fits because remember I still had that issue with Boris Karloff voicing the Grinch when he's actually you know saying stuff. So it, it didn't really um, stand out to me too much in this version with Hans Conry. Maybe that's why you didn't like the Grinch in the first one, because you saw this one first. <laughs> that doesn't sound like Hans Connery. I just thought this thing was bizarre. Watching this one for the first time was a trip. Yeah. Yeah. I did enjoy when, um, gosh, the grandpa was Josiah, the kid was... And Grandpa Josiah said, Nicariah the... says, Nicariah. Grandpa Josiah says, just... <laughs> he uh, goes off and says that he needs to go use the euphemism. Yes, that, that was the, was best the one part that made me laugh out loud when the, the kid said he had to go use the euphemism. He had to go to the euphemism, yeah. <laughs> and then that's repeated throughout. I and also. The, and the grandpa's because, like, you don't go to the euphemism when it's nice like this. <laughs> and I was like, why? What, what do you do then? Uh, there's a bucket. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's either like go in a bucket or be blown away. Yep. Oh, yeah. take, take your pick. Yeah. But also, when he said that, I'm like, what is he talking about? And then I realized, but I'm just, I literally, like, I Googled the Wikipedia term because I'm just like, this is something I have never heard used, ever. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that nobody have, has used that previous term, or that term ever. I think that's part of the joke, yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. I also did look up, because I'm a weirdo, um, 1977 was when this came out, um, when... Grandpa Josiah talks about not opening the door for a buck fifty or two fifty or six sixty mm -hmm. or sixty sixty. Uh, a buck fifty is equal to seven fifty four in modern day American currency. Uh, two fifty is twelve dollars and fifty seven cents. Six sixty is thirty three dollars and nineteen cents, and sixty sixty is three hundred and four dollars and seventy cents. If you wanted to know. Which brings the question that I have for everyone. Like, how bad does a night have to be for you not to go out if someone offers you $66,600,000 and an extra 66 cents? <laughs> I mean, how far outside are we talking? Out. <laughs> how far out the door are we talking? Are we talking like a foot, a whole body? I don't Just know. I, I, let's say a few feet. Yeah. I mean, I'll do it. I need the $66,000. As <laughs> long as I can have a flashlight, sure. I don't need a flashlight. You just need to promise me 20 bucks and I will be out that door. <laughs> I was like, 20 bucks, I got this. My question is, where did the idea for this come from? Like, drugs. Who watched the original Grinch and thought, you know what this needs? A prequel where the Grinch is called in to cause terror during a storm. <laughs> I'm <laughs> assuming <Yeah>. drugs. <laughs> yeah, that's usually a good answer in the 70s. <laughs> I, I suppose, but... I'm still questioning 
like how it got all the way to production stage. I guess someone wanted to make a Halloween special and they thought, hey, what's a good Dr. Seuss scary character? Like, oh, maybe the Grinch. And I guess it just went from there. But the weird thing is the word Halloween isn't mentioned at all at once in this special. Yeah. Well, I read that they changed the name at at some point later on. Yeah, for some releases, yeah. I should have paid attention to my DVD. I can't remember what the the title was on the DVD. But I would sort of imagine, too, that, like, because I suppose they celebrate Christmas. So, in theory, like, the Whoville would celebrate um, Halloween as well. But I don't know. I guess how the Grinch stole Easter wasn't that <laughs> yeah. worthy. <laughs> well, they, they tried it with the Peanuts and it, the Peanuts characters, and it just didn't quite work. <laughs> The, the whole thing just felt like, I don't know, a fever dream. Yeah. Like, it's, it's so many random things. Like I think that's kind of like what it was supposed to be, I guess. I don't know. It just felt like somebody had a weird idea and wrote it down and nobody did any rewrites. It was just like, <laughs> put this into production. Yes, sir. Like, what is this? Oh, well, I don't get paid to ask questions. I'll just do it. <laughs> I mean, not to get too blasé about it, I think a lot of specials from this time, just generally, like, you know, you have, like, your main one and then you bring out multiple mm-hmm. ones after that. I think that they just kind of, well, you know, the Grinch is popular. Let's toss them on this. We'll call it a day. I mean, look at how many weird peanut specials there are. And they're not necessarily 70s per se. Yeah. But they do. They are still cranked. I mean, how many properties even today is that done with where it's like, oh, well, it worked here and. People, you know, if we attach whatever thing to it, people will go see it. I, I think not necessarily as cynical as it is today. I do think it is does still, I think it affected it then as much as it does now. I think part of it too is like, as the, the cool kids, young kids nowadays say, making content. I guess it was um, yeah. done to, uh, to actually fill in time in, on, on these TV broadcasts. That is a very good way to see it. Yeah, probably. It did feel like. I guess oddly paced like when it ended i didn't really feel like much had happened oh yeah it was very anti oh yeah the uh, storm just ended. Just, <laughs> yeah it just ended it's like the grinch was like oh the wind that is gone i must go back up the mountain and also i just i didn't like how they portrayed the grinch in this one because i was the grinch is the grinch yeah and he you know max is well taken care of even if he is exploited a little bit there was like Mm -hmm. that fine balance between the grinch clearly loves max but also maybe overworks him a little bit in this one he just kind of just abuses max yeah the point where max ditches the grinch and leaves the way yeah it it ended with him leaving and this was supposed to be a prequel so he must go back to him at some point maybe it's like a multiverse and this is a different grinch but possibly I'm, i this is not canon this <laughs> is not my grinch i just <laughs> I not my grinch. Not my grinch. <laughs> I, it made me mad because i'm like like i think i feel like the grinch like would draw a line and like doing this to his own dog you know like i don't know i mean he made his he, he made his dog carry a gigantic sleigh of packages up a up a giant hill but no agreed i think that i don't know like there's that that long-suffering side character that you know Mm -hmm. always gets the comeuppets i mean and not knowing i don't think max was based on like the great race but there are obviously connections to those to those characters too so it's Mm -hmm. yeah it it got it got a little weird quick and like i say there's not a lot that happened it was there was a story but there really wasn't a story you know you have the whole song about max and his his auntie the max song is pretty sad yeah but the thing is like it didn't really connect it sort of connected but it didn't really like, there wasn't a point. It's like, oh, okay, here's this really sad song. And then at the end, he gets picked up by um, the kid. But then in between that, there's not really anything that would, you know, move that story along. It's just there just because. Yeah, 100%. That's what this That's what this sequel or prequel or whatever the heck it is, is. Mm-hmm. It's just, oh, well, we're going to do this. Oh, you know, he's covered in brambles. He's going to complain about it for a bit. Oh, he's going to do this. Gonna do that, whatever. So, it was, it's one of those th- stories where things just happen, and it doesn't seem like there's any reason for them to happen. They just happen. Like you have the whole chain of events at the beginning, where the sour sweet wind comes in, causes all the stuff to happen, which 
apparently calls the Grinch down to the town for Grinch night, which everybody's terrified of. And then the whole episode is just him coming down the mountain, a little kid getting blown away, finding him. And by the end, the sour sweet wind dies down and he doesn't even get to the town. He just leaves. And the kid doesn't even get to the euphemism. So I don't know. He's been holding <laughs> it this whole half an hour. <laughs> I just assume he went under the bramble bush with the, uh, the one of a kind uh, oh, the, wiggle the, wag or whatever yes. that is called. <laughs> I mean, he got blown away. He probably had an accident while he was flying through the air. I wasn't expecting that wasn't rain, rain tonight. <laughs> I did like the voice cast, though. I, like I said, I didn't mind Hans Conrad as the Grinch. I enjoyed how how, uh, how Smith was Uncle Josiah. Henry Gibson was the singer of the Max song, and uh, the reason I recognize I I thought his voice sounded familiar was oh he's the voice of Wilbur from the Charlotte's Web movie from the seventies as well. Oh, like, that's oh. cool. That's why I recognize that voice. Uh, he, and the voice of the uh, the general guy who was like giving updates on the Grinch's activities. I I enjoy that too. Which thank goodness for him. Otherwise, we wouldn't have known what was going on. You know, the blinking <laughs> lights you had to watch closely. For some reason, he gave me the oh the character from the Flintstones. Um, not the Great Gizmo, the Great Gazoo. 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 Yeah, he gave me Great Gazoo vibes, and I think it's probably just like his headgear more than anything else. But mm-hmm. and even the songs generally, I I did enjoy them. I like the you know not going out at night like this song. I like the Max song. I like that weird one in the middle with all those creatures. And that is one thing too. The the music of any of the Grinch pieces you know is always strong like whatever the stories are they they you can always count on music because i know that dr seuss you know he did the lyrics for for this and you know and the original of course and i think that actually um, helps part of part of me was just wondering if dr seuss was sort of just there in name only because it felt like someone imitating his style rather than him himself i forget uh i know i read the but and then they talk about this but I forget the details. Well, I know he was involved somehow, but mm-hmm. to what degree, I don't know. Not that it's exactly the same, but it felt like weird fan fiction. I guess the only the other thing I had to say was both the Grinch and uh, Gaston have a, a tendency to expectorate <laughs> and actually <laughs> know too. what the word means. So. <laughs> I was like, oh, another animated thing that actually uses the scientific i don't know if that's scientific scientific word for spitting it's just <laughs> like that's very <laughs> random like you never hear that word anywhere else and he did it before gaston so oh, nice. he was a, he was a trailblazer <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> i also love that it was a great night for eyebrows according to the grinch oh, yes. yeah that was weird i was gonna say too the songs like i don't know how much was collaborated between dr seuss but the songs were written by joe raposo who was like the original writer for songs for sesame street so did he do that one too or was it just he the, did both the, halloween is grinch night and the grinch and the grinch, grinch is the cat okay. in the hat mm-hmm. nice so they got some good uh talent there very i mean everybody has off days <laughs> yeah <laughs> But I think too that any of this stuff, Not you know, the we music look, was bad, but no, just the, the special in general was strange. But I think we look back and you, you kind of hold like shows like just for example, for his freeling, we hold them to that standard of, oh, they're a master of what they do, you know. But then they, they did. I mean, they got paid for their work. They, they did whatever jobs came along. That's just part of what they did. Mm-hmm. And they're going to have the things that shine and the things that are you know, good and the things that are normal and the things that are kind of, eh. Yeah. Every every creator is going to have that. Every actor is going to have that. So. Job is a job. Exactly. Then and now. I suppose we can move on to the Grinch. Grinch is the cat in the hat. I don't know which one was weirder. This one or the Halloween one. This one you could definitely see probably had the least budget of the three. <laughs> but it felt like it had more of a story. Like there was a, a clear through line from open to close. That is true. It did have a lot more story than the Halloween one. Like, it actually had a point to it. Yeah, I guess you have a point there. I enjoyed the story of this one more. And I I liked it more because it was funny. The Halloween one I didn't find super funny. So this one, this one was funnier. And 
I just I like how the cat the hat talked. Like it was just so absurd. And just he's so funny. Like <laughs> it's hard to take him seriously. And it's nice in contrast to like the Grinch where he's just like so grumpy. It's just it's funny to watch. And then the ending is so funny in my opinion. Remember your mother and the Grinch is like, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to jump to the end, but I will say that is the, to me, is the saddest song I've seen in anything animation related. He sobbed the whole puddle. Yeah, yeah. Like I would put, I would go to YouTube to listen to a song just, just to have a good cry. <laughs> <laughs> it was also interesting to see because the cat in the hat is generally portrayed as pretty chill. You know, nothing really gets his goat, and his goat was really gotten in this one. His goat was cut. <laughs> yes. He did got that goat there. He's got the goat good, you know, eh? Hey. Hey. I can't blame him. If if someone invented a machine that scrambles sound waves and make me sound like a cow, I, I think I would be mad too. Like No, hundred percent. Also a sound wave scrambler was just so absurd and so funny. I mean, I'm not a scientist, but I'm like, I don't know. That's how it works, but all right. Well, they also have a dark house, which is like the opposite of a lighthouse, where it spreads out a beam of dark. Okay. <laughs> we, don't even, we don't even talk about that. <laughs> I did. I do kind of like that as a concept. It was strange in this, but I feel like it could have potential in the right kind of a sci-fi story. I think I was reading it was inspired by one of the later books where the cat in the hat mentions a a flash dark rather than a flashlight. Nice. <laughs> the Grinch of all people would be the one to have a, a dark a light, dark wouldn't he? <laughs> I think it did a good job of expanding. And not that you're going to get a lot of emotional depth from a character like the Grinch, but I, I you did get a lot of a lot of depth as to who he was and kind of, you know, where he came from as much as you can. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, we need to have the Grinch have a backstory. How about a mother? The Grinch lore expands. <laughs> yeah, expand the he, Grinch lore. <laughs> he has a mom. He didn't just pop into existence. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you go by the Jim Carrey movie, then um, th that's up for grabs. But <laughs> Well, and there was some um, some of the speculation that what he saw in the mirror was actually his dad. Huh. Hmm, I did that's interesting. I didn't think about that. I don't know if it's true or not, but I mean, I could certainly see, you know, you're because you're influenced by what came previously and the expectations that are put upon you. But maybe that's looking too deep into a, a simple story, too. Are you talking about like people theorizing about this special? Yeah, that's what that, this special specifically, like when he looks in the mirror and he says good morning to his reflection and the reflection tells oh, him, take, okay. the, take the, the Grinch oath and all that stuff. Okay. That's in theory, that was his dad because his mom kind his of mother. upset. <laughs> no, 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 no. Sorry. That was apologies. I didn't mean to screw that up. <laughs> no, that makes sense for a theory. Like, that's not what they said, but I, as a theory, that does make sense as to him being chastised for having a change of heart if his father was a bridge like he used to be. Mm hmm. Imagine if their entire species, their like whole thing is just being a hater for like their entire life, <laughs> like just being <laughs> grumpy, mad, angry all the time for their whole whole lifespan. I think they should make another movie. <laughs> Grinch lore. Like, the Grinch too, the the family reunion. It's like exactly, a Tigger movie, yeah. except yeah, he realizes he's the only one. Grinch two, Electric Boogaloo. I mean, mm -hmm. give Illumination enough time, and I bet they'll come up with something. Very true. <laughs> Illumination knows how to milk a concept. You'll come after the Speckle of E5 and Minions 3, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. I did have to laugh at the one um, the, the, when the Grinch is talking to the cat in the hat in front of his house about how he can change sounds and stuff. <laughs> the rhyme he's able to make is hilarious. So he says, The sounds that you make are the sounds of my choice. I can make oh, you yeah, sound yeah, better yeah. or make you sound voiced. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i was like i guess they really needed it to run <laughs> yeah well run I, at any cost <laughs> the, the, there's kind of a precedent for that in dr seuss because like in the book the one line let me see if i can find it because it's in the special too the special and the book when he's stealing all the stuff he's on the roof 
And he stuffed them in bags. Then the Grinch, very nimbly, stuffed all the bags one by one up the chimbley. <laughs> <laughs> Point so, taken. There's precedent for weird forced rhymes in Dr. Seuss. <laughs> hey, I'll take a weird forced rhyme over a, a near rhyme any day. <laughs> Point taken. <laughs> Actually, I probably would too, especially in something like this. Like uh, that Wonka movie that came out uh, where when he rhymed uh, chocolate with pocket. I like that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm going to say is that uh, I will never call anyone Mr. Greenface ever because the wrath of, be- of um, the Grinch is very, very, very extreme. <laughs> That's supposed to be some sort of slur in Grinch culture. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> That was the most benign little offhanded mention that just really ticked him off. <laughs> so do we actually know what the what it means to Grinch someone? When it says the Grinch Grinch is the cat in the hat. I assume it means follow them and make them miserable. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. They don't actually say that. I just kind of inferred that from what he was doing through the whole thing. According to Google AI. Grinching <laughs> is a verb that means to make someone feel bad to describe someone as a killjoy or a party pooper. Okay. Well, AI knows everything, so. The verb of grinching is used to mean a harsh grating noise. <laughs> Interesting. You could also use it to feel embarrassed or ashamed about something. No, that's cringe, not grinch. Do you think if you read him the definition, that would also be like a lengthy insult to the grinch culture? Yes, exactly. <laughs> I agree with I agree with Carmen. I like the Ken Hatch voice. Mason Adams does it in this one, but the, the voice I'm most familiar with is Alan Sherman, who does it in the actual Ken the Hat special, but he had died by, by this time. But Mason Adams does a really good job as the Ken the Hat with his weird and funky vocabulary and <laughs> and Bob I forget the actor plays the Grinch Colt, yes. I think yeah. he does, he's not a bad Grinch either, even though I prefer Hans Conrad and yeah, and they're they're the right two characters to put together. Like imagine a buddy cop film with them, with them two together. <laughs> oh, that'd I'd be hilarious! That. Yeah. That'd be so awesome. I was watching this and I was like, this is like when people online make up their own fan fictions about mashing up two completely unrelated characters. Although these are semi-related since they're both from Doctor Seuss. It's like, who had the idea to put the cat in the hat with the Grinch? Works better than Horton. <laughs> I, I suppose. Horton, get your uh, get your nest and get over here. Hey, but Horton and the Grinch both, like, both exist with who's, so there's that connection. That is true. Uh, uh, <laughs> now Illumination's going to do that movie. <laughs> oh, no, they're listening in. <laughs> that would be the way to tell whether they're listening or not. <laughs> And they'll be like, no, we totally thought of it on our own. Yeah, right. Been in production for years. <laughs> I think the thing that surprised me the most was I thought that the cat in the hat sounded familiar. So I looked up his voice actor, and he's the guy who did the voiceover for Smucker's commercials <laughs> with a name like Smucker's. It has to be good. With a name like Cat in the Hat, <laughs> it has to be good. <laughs> And that voiceover he he used to do like long before I would have seen it, but he apparently came back in the '90s or early 2000s or so, sometime when I would have seen commercials, and he did that same line again, and it's just his voice is so recognizable as the guy from the Smuckers commercials. <laughs> I don't think I've seen that commercial. I just remember them riffing on that all the time with MST3K. I don't know, just that that line, I just remember that specific line from childhood for whatever reason. With a name like Smuckers, it's got to be good. I don't blame you. I don't think I was that familiar with him from anything else. Yeah, I was, th- I was looking at his filmography too. Well, too, there's those, there are those voices for every generation. You know, you go to the 80s and you hear the same voices across all of the major cartoons or, you know, like mm-hmm. Casey Kasem doing Shaggy. Or Frank Welker doing um, Fred. I was just going to say, everybody. Frank Welker is in this, too. He played Max. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah like, I think my favorite part of the special, and the only part that I really liked a lot, is the song, The Stuff in Your Heart, Remember Your Mother. That was quite good. I don't really know that I had anything that stood out to me as something that I really liked. I was kind of bored with this one. I almost feel like I like the Halloween one better, just because oh, no, it was so absolutely bizarre. 
I liked the beginning when the, the Grinch first came across the cat in the hat at the picnic and everything. I thought that was funny. I just I also enjoyed watching them drive their little cars. There's just something really silly about it. <laughs> Yeah. um, <laughs> like yeah. there's just the proportions of the cars and their bodies are just silly. And then I liked the ending leading up to the cat in the hat doing that song. Mhm. The middle was funny, but it was only because of the gadgets. Like Mhm. after he showed them off, I was like, oh, I'm getting a little like bored. Yeah. It just it falls a little flat in the middle. I would say the introduction of the two characters is pretty funny. The ending is funny and sad. The middle is kind of like meh. Felt like fluff a lot of it in the middle. Yeah. I feel like this could have been three to five minute little episodes. Instead of like one long special, they maybe they should have just done like Broken a couple up. episodes of this, but maybe that probably wasn't their goal, but I think I think a short format would be pretty funny for kind of what they were going for. I feel like something shorter would have made more sense because there was a lot of what you could call filler in this. Mm especially all the stuff with the gadgets. -hmm. Yeah. But I don't know that it would have made sense for this thing because they were trying to do a television special. So I can't remember if you guys mentioned or not, but is this all you guys' first time seeing these two sequels? Yeah. Or have you seen Yes. them before? No, Yeah, I've never very seen much either so. of these. Hmm. I watched The Grinch, Grinch is the Cat in the Hat. I don't know how I managed to come across this, but somehow it did end up airing on TV in the 2000s. So Nice. <laughs> I thought I, I thought it was a fever dream. <laughs> like, and until Jonathan was talking about it and I was like, I thought I made that up in my head. <laughs> I was content that I was never going to find this because like, Every time, like I, I came up with Dr. Seuss. I'm like, they crossed over at one point, and I'm like, no, I made that up. That was hallucinated, but no, I, it's real. On the subject of fever dreams, did anyone else, the, the psycho psychedelic piece with the cat in the hat, about three quarters of the way through, did anyone else get like the um, uh, elephants are on parade thing from Dumbo? Yes, yes. Kind of, but Oh my you could god. you kind of always have that comparison when you have something With psychedelic any psychedelic in animation. <laughs> That is true. I actually really enjoyed that part. I thought it was really creative. And the way that they changed up the animation Uh was, was kind of neat. -huh. I do enjoy when people try something different with animation rather than just doing the same thing, especially Yeah. for something that's already kind of weird. Yeah. Well, considering the uh, Grinch went from brown to kind of weirdly greened back to mossy brown to green to whatever else throughout the course of this. His design is very inconsistent, even even within his own specials. Yeah. But this was probably, I think, like looking at what they did in the Halloween special. Um, this was, to me at least, closest to what the book looked like. That could just be me. I can see that. Maybe, kind of, I would say that it was a little simpler than the book, but as far as basic shapes, yes. Because this, I felt like, was the least detailed, probably because it probably had the least amount of budget. Also true. Yeah, the part with all the gadgets, as I was watching, I was like, this is exactly the same type of thing that's in Santa Claus versus the devil. <laughs> You're true. <laughs> Very true. I was like, how does this work? Like, where is the camera? Well, why can this guy use this to see whatever he wants to see? Which is the same questions that I had with Santa Claus versus the devil. How can Santa use this device to see all the children? How did he turn everything pers or persimmon persimmonian <laughs> pink? Persimmon? Are persimmons pink? I thought persimmons were orange. I thought so too. Now I'm going to Google it because I thought persimmons were like an orange-ish Am I fruit. am I labeling it wrong or was it I thought They it was are persimmon. definitely orange. Huh. Maybe I'll Google Pursue in Pink and see if there's something out there that is. Persimmon pink wigs that shows up. There you go. The closest you get is the American Persimmon, but I would still describe that as peachish orangey rather than pink. American saw was making things wrong. <laughs> yeah, no, Persimmons are orange, so I think that was just somebody wanted something that sounded good together. Yeah. Alliterative. Exactly. Gotta love alliteration. Yes. The guy that did the animations could have been colorblind or something. <laughs> That's a bad feel to get into. Oh.
Well, you know, you rise above. That's true. <laughs> well, if the Grinch is changing color through the whole thing, then maybe. I mean, you look at like 80s and not to diss on 80s animators because they were under a lot of pressure and there was a lot that went into that stuff. But 80s animation generally is not known for its consistency at all. Yeah. You had so many people walking through walls and like changing skin tones halfway through the season. Yeah, that that's not all that outside the box for what they were doing in the 80s. Generally, just go back and watch G.I. Joe or Gem and the Holograms or the Transformers, <laughs> and that'll be all you need to know right there. There's your proof. <laughs> yeah. Proof is in the pudding. I think another interesting thing about this one is this was produced by Marvel Productions. That is interesting. <laughs> and I think it won an Emmy as well for the music. I, I saw that and I was like, why this? Because <laughs> the mother song, man. They're the yeah. only ones that applied for the award. Okay, that I, I don't know, but I'm like, you show up. Oh, we did this thing. Okay, here you go. You're the only one that showed up. Congratulations. Nah, mother song just like soloed everything else. Exactly. It made everyone cry a puddle at the awards. Well, people were more emotional back in the day. Or hardened. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Our mothers don't bring tears. They it's just a single tear. That's it. The its competitors in that year were two Charlie Brown specials and two Smurfs specials. <laughs> it's a pretty tight crowd there. Yeah. I could see it beating the Smurfs, but to beat Peanuts? That's interesting. The one is the Charlie Brown celebration, and the other one is Someday You'll Find Her Charlie Brown. Is that oh, about the red, red-headed red-headed girl. Riff? Yeah. yeah. Poor guy. <laughs> That's more sad than anything that Grinch could sing about. In defense, he didn't sing anything. That's true. Just looking through the list of all the stuff in the 80s, Charlie Brown is in there just about every year for a while. Sometimes more than once. It's amazing how many Charlie Brown specials that were cranked out over the course of time. Well, you can do all of them, Jonathan, for a podcast. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I probably should at some point because I would like to catch up on a lot of some of that stuff. Probably not everything, but they're still making new ones on Apple TV now. Are yes. they? Yeah, yeah. The, the newest one was about Franklin. I think that came out like, like last oh, month okay. or so. I was gonna say, I remember there being a big thing about the uh, chart, the Christmas special only being on Apple TV, and how um, upset people were about it. I think that got um, un- un- they undid that rule. Yeah, I would imagine so. You, but even still, just the fact that it was there that makes sense. Though that they're they're kind of mm-hmm. um, using that and making new specials and such. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't think I've got much more to say about these strange specials. <laughs> you learn nothing else from this. Do not call anyone Greenface or uh, Mister. Sorry, Mister Greenface, or um, go to the euphemism during uh, the sour Thanks, sweet wind. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. If someone's bullying you, remind them they have a mom. <laughs> yes. There you go. If someone's grinching you, remind That's them true. they have a mom. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to start calling people that like are um, making fun of me grinches, and they're going to be like, what? I'm gonna be like, You're a grinch. Soften your heart, man. <laughs> yeah, Remember exactly. your mother. <laughs> <laughs> she just dropped me off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remember your mother. <laughs> I kind of want to make using the euphemism a, a term that comes into into the public consciousness. We gotta, I just we, think that's hilarious. We got to start doing it in in public now. Absolutely, get on it, John. Change the world once one person at a time. We just need one viral tweet. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's it's just such a weirdly hilarious way to refer to using the bathroom. It reminds me of um, Fantastic Mr. Fox when. For the word they use, oh the yeah, curse, they actually use the word "cuss." <laughs> yeah, oh, that's curse awesome. Word. <laughs> yeah, that's that's another great one. That one we sometimes reference, so maybe we should try and <laughs> do that with euphemism. <laughs> we need a euphemism break right now. <laughs> <laughs> it would help if I had more people here around me that had seen this that would find it as funny as I did. Well, you got to start someplace. Just start showing it to people. You have a large family. True, but I can't really in good conscience recommend it as anything other than <laughs> just the fact that I want them to see someone say the euphemism. <laughs> Humor is universal. I think if I told them that they needed to watch this, they'd be bored and confused 
and they wouldn't take my recommendations anymore. <laughs> you know what you do though? You edit it down to all the interesting bits, which is probably about 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> And centered around euphemism, or the, going to a euphemism. And then he gets hit by a tree branch. Yes. <laughs> this is what happens if you don't get to do the euphemism. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's probably a good place as any to end this one. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the last thing is like in if you want to do like in order, what what are your favorites in order, or which would you rather, which would you rewatch first? Well, the original would be the first one. And I suppose I would watch the Halloween one next. And the Grinch Grinch is the cat in the hat last. I'm the first is definitely the Christmas, how how the Grinch stole Christmas. Second, Grinch Grinch is the cat in the hat. Third, the Halloween Grinch special. I would say the original, um, the Grinch that Grinch the Cat in the Hat, and then Way, 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 way back down the road, you know, still waiting to be, uh, you know, hitchhiking to be picked up and brought up to where everybody else is, the uh, Halloween special. Right. <laughs> and I think I would do the Halloween one first, then the Christmas one, then Grinch Grinch is the cat in the head. Nice. So I think all four of us had four different permutations of this. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I wouldn't expect such a diverse selection of opinions on these, but. <laughs> there, there you, you go, go. <laughs> the Grinch would do that to you hey you brought on a diverse group of people we give you diverse answers mm, well, that's true yes. <laughs> or else this podcast is going right in the euphemism <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. that's pretty good I like that so much <laughs> <laughs> I approve <laughs> thanks well until the next time do you guys want to let people know where they can find you if they want more content from you mark yeah um, you can find me in my blogs i have two blogs one is the animation commendation at the animation .com, where i post the animated film review as top 13 list and i host a who wants to be a millionaire animation edition game show for the past few years um and so you can check me out there and i also have my live action disney project at my live action disney project.com where i'm trying to watch and review every single theatrically released disney film ever made i've been doing it for over 10 years now and i still have more to do so uh follow me there if you care to follow me on that journey nice and carmen yeah um you can find me on instagram because it's the only place i really post under the username kiki underscore doodles and i post mainly photography but also sometimes drawings if i'm in the mood <laughs> and nikki uh you can find me on youtube at trivial theater i do a wide array of random obscure and straight up bad movies okay well we will See you next time, and Nikki will be back to talk about the Jim Carrey version in the next episode, so <laughs> see you then. Thanks for listening to Every Version Ever. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe and follow my co-hosts as well. My link tree and all of our links will be in the description below. If you want more of my content, all my podcasts are available on YouTube as well as most podcast platforms. If you enjoyed this show, check out one of the other podcasts or check out my Patreon for bonus and extended episodes you won't find anywhere else. We'll be back soon with another brand new episode, so thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.